Support for this show, Politics and Right, comes from politicsandright.com, publishers of How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. It's worth it, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, and other books written by Egberto Willis. Support for this show, Politics and Right, comes from politicsandright.com, publishers of How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. It's worth it, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, and other books written by Egberto Willis. Welcome to Politics and Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning to the great state of Texas. And of course, good morning to Northeast Texas, Southeast Texas, Northwest Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana, and to every nook and cranny receiving our 100,000 watt transmitted signal to those little boxes known as radios, a.k.a. the Howard Reynolds boxes. Anyway, folks, we're going to have a great show for you today. I hope you had a great weekend. I had a workful weekend, but an enjoyable weekend. We can, uh, nonetheless, uh, remember those signals going to the rest of the world. The Internet is how everybody around the world, whether it be Barcelona, Spain, or whether it be London, England, or whatever, that takes a taste of politics done right every so often. That was designed by whom? The Internet? By you, under the auspices of the United States government. We, the people of the United States, creating what again? The ARPANET. That is now the internet that billionaires are currently controlling that you must take back. Anyway, good morning, studio. How are you guys doing right now? Well, good morning, Alberto. Good morning. Uh, was, was, that co- was that coffee really good? No, I was having a uh, taste of politics done right there. Oh, um, there you go. Oh, it was delicious. It has all kinds of good things for you. Nutrients like you wouldn't believe. Nutrients for the brain. Makes you think. There we go. Yes, and yes, yes. people don't like yes. to do that. Yeah, obviously people don't like to do that because of the Republican candidate. Uh, once <laughs> again, I just heard on Arnie that he was trying to, uh, what is it, privatize NOAA so that yeah. the U.S. government would uh, have a subscription so his billionaire buddies could get in on this thing. Yes, yes, Where does yes, it stop, yes. man? And when is, when do people wake up and go, Hey, wait a minute. This is bad. This is really bad. So I'm guessing my Trump derangement syndrome is showing again, as I've been accused of having. It's really Trump awareness syndrome. But so, you know, you don't you don't have a Trump derangement syndrome. Look, you are a you're a good guy. You're a good and forgive me if I get it wrong, but I think you're a good, fairly conservative guy who just want things to work right. And that's yeah. what everybody wants, right? And I mean, uh, but we got to make people aware of what's going on. And hopefully that's what we get done here. And I read a disturbing article this morning about uh, an Ohio, Ohio judge dismissing the uh, Haitian case, saying, oh, well, there's really no real evidence that there was a problem. A Republican judge, like seriously, these poor people were had hellfire released on them because of an idiot's comment about them eating I, dogs and cats. And I am going to try. Yeah, I'm going to try to. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Howard. Go ahead. There's just there's, there's just no evidence that this was a problem, and you have to worry about freedom of speech. Well, lies are not freedom of speech. So, and causing havoc and problems is for their for their little town up there. What, what? Wait a minute. Hold the phone here. So I'm hoping they'll go forward with a civil case against him, which I think uh, would probably, which would probably fare better. Yeah, yeah. I I think they will. I know that the the interestingly, the woman in the the Haitian organization who filed suit, I interviewed their uh, the uh, president of the group in Baltimore in last net roots, and I I didn't. I just read the news and said, oh, she's suing. I know that person. Let me see if I can find her. So I'm, I'm going to try to reach her to get an interview 
for our show. Mm -hmm. now, like I said, a criminal case, probably maybe not. Yeah. But a civil case, I think you could probably win a civil case on that one. Now, let me ask you this. Think about this, Howard. The amount of money that had to be spent because of a lie by both the state of Ohio to protect the kids in school, et cetera, who bears the cost? Well, the citizens do. The taxpayer does. Yeah. And once again, once again, Teflon Trump comes away unscathed. But there's a little surprise waiting for him on the January 6 filings. Yes. We can't, wait, we can't wait for that one. That's going to be good. Yes. Heck, yes. You got some wisdom over there. Got about a half page from what I'm seeing. Yeah, I hope it's wisdom. I think it is. You know, the jobs report for Biden is really good. You know, that uh, those were posts were last week, you know, but I'm just saying hooray for Biden and the Democrats. Progressive economic policies created 16 million jobs in one term. That's historic. Creating over a quarter of a million jobs in September. Go ahead, Joe, take that vi victory lap. You and the Democrats deserve it. Uh, progressive economic policies that elevate the working class people, not corporations. Trickle down economics is a misnomer for neoliberal economic policies that distribute wealth up to the top few. And they use that wealth to try to subjugate the citizenry. Oh, Reaganomics, supply side economics, trickle down, whatever you want to call it, failed miserably. And here it's we are. It's, it, go ahead, Jack. It's made, it's made a whole lot of corporate uh, tycoons very rich, and they pull that money and use it against the people, okay, because they want to stay in power. Yeah, Arnie was very interesting this morning about the billionaire preachers and how they manipulate Texas government. Mm. So if anybody wants to hear that show, and they should, they should listen to that show. On the archive. Now we have an archive page where all of our shows are recorded and you can hear them again. If you didn't hear Arnie this morning, you really should because it's very enlightening as to how Texas politics has been bought off by two billionaire preachers and they're pushing the government in Texas so far to the right. I mean, we may never be able to find it. It may fall off the entire right side. It's the fringe now. And that's who's you know, in control of Texas. What is so sad is that, you know, they are completely anathema to what Jesus represents. And I am not a Christian anymore. I'm a humanist. But the Jesus that I followed back when I was in Panama was a Jesus of helping thy neighbor, was a Jesus of, uh, you know, giving food to your neighbor, inviting the stranger, the foreigner, all that, all the good things, you know, um, it are just teaching you how to value other humans. That's who Jesus was. And mm -hmm. they purport to support the guy with a kind of a Christianity that I don't recognize. And it's as a, as, because it is called Christianity and it's a religion, it's a, it has depraved a lot of people from the thinking that they had. I mean, it has even taken parts of my family who are evangelical Christians and you know, they are almost unrecognizable in the thought process. And these are people that are very smart. It's amazing yeah. what it does to you, you know. Well, Egberto, I have heard it said once before. And the first time I heard it kind of struck me. But then I've heard it again and again. Nobody can hate like a good Christian. It's true. It is true. That's the sad so part. True. Because Christ that, would look yeah. at you and go, you're nuts. Why are you hating people? I didn't tell you to do that. So anyway, uh, we have successfully hijacked your show here. Well, <laughs> let, let's be clear. You are part of the show, so there's no hijacking here. Now, what gets hijacked a lot is what Jack does. And Jack would come in with a subject and he'd make it so enticing for me that I have to keep on it, you know? So, but yeah, hey. it's like a cat and catnip. Well, it was yeah, funny. I was part of your post this morning. I try to keep it on topic. <laughs> well, actually, that was a good one because I only have to say a little bit. I have the videos and everything that I, the, the narrative that I gave to the, the thing on, on, on uh, Biden, as well as a narrative on Kamala Harris that I probably won't get to 
because I know after the initial subject, we're probably going to get some calls on that. So let's go ahead and get started, my dear brothers. The title of the show today is The Attempt to Scapegoat Kamala Harris. Why is the working class so angry? And Biden's victory lap. Well, of course, our brother Jack started out with the uh, item on the Biden's victory lap. I just want to tell folks one thing: there are when, uh, it, un unfortunately, in our country today, lying on TV is legal. Uh, and and that being said, too many Americans are lied to as things as what it is that caused inflation. They've lied to on where we really are on crime. They've lied to on where, where the job market really lies. And then they tell you, just look at your grocery budget to keep mad to show you that this administration has failed. When the reality is all the prices that you're seeing in stores, et cetera, is a direct result of the policies that if a Donald Trump were to get instituted would never get mitigated because, again, it's a part of the scheme. The entire thing is a part of the scheme. So today, today I want to start with the article that I brought out called Why is the Working Class So Angry? And it's important. And there is an author, Les Leopold, I think he also uh, is a, is his articles also appear in the New York Times sometimes, if I recall correctly. But this one, he has a common dreams. And when I read the article, I said, oh, my God, that's the outline that I would have had for a show. Why don't I use it as the outline for today's show? Because I can go into his article and expand on what he's talking about. So he wrote an article titled 135.9 Million Reasons Why the Working Class is So Angry. Then he says, since 1993, 60.2 million workers who had been on the job for at least three years have been laid off, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Another 75.7 .7 million with less than three years tenure have also been let go. In total, that's 135.9 million workers who know all too well the pain and suffering of a major disruption of their employment. Working people understand that the periodic ups and downs of the economy can legitimately lead to job loss. But they also know that in many cases, the reason they lost their job was not mismatches in supply and demand. Rather, their jobs were sacrificed to satisfy out-and-out -out corporate greed. I disagree with that sentence or that paragraph. He says, working people understand that the periodic ups and downs of the working economy can legitimately lead to job loss, but they also know that in many cases, the reasons they lost their job is not, does not, uh, was not mismatches in supply and demand. No. I, uh, Leopold, I love you, brother, but that's wrong. Most people don't know it. When most people lose their job, the first thing they say that damn president caused me to lose my job or he messed up the economy and all of that. That's the first thing that the average American citizens think. That's why Trump can go out right now and say uh, Biden is screwing up the economy, even though under Biden, the unemployment rate went from double digits all the way down to now 4.1 percent. Right. But somehow you can blame the wrong person for it. So Leopold, I understand what he's doing right there, but he's incorrect in believing that most people understand what he, he wrote next. And here's what he wrote next. Private equity and greed. And while he understands it, most people don't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read his paragraph and then I'm going to explain in a bit more detail. Private equity and greed. Workers know that when a private equity firm buys up the company at which they work, trouble lies ahead. Just ask the 33,000 workers at Toys R Us who lost their jobs when the fabled company was driven into ground by KKR, a huge private equity company. KKR bought the toy giant for $6 billion in 2005, $5 billion 
of the purchase price was financed with debt, and KKR put on the Toys R Us on the book, uh, which KKR put on Toys R Us books. Then the rape and pillage commence as Toys R Us slash costs due to service the debt, pay KKR hefty management fees, and quickly fall behind in competition. Walmart and Amazon, Ali Savaral, writing in the LA Times, wrote, KKR and its partners told off Toys R Us, uh, right, sold off Toys R Us real estate, pocketed the money, and forced retailer to lease back its buildings, along with uh, KKR and other firms paid themselves $250 million in management fees and big bonuses to handpick executives right uh, before Toys R Us entered bankruptcy. This deserves a little bit more understanding. When I talk about the difference between capitalism and free enterprise, I'm talking about the difference between a slaved base economy where others do the work and some people just profit from the work other than a rather than a collective economy where everybody is paid commensurate with what they produce meaning a farmer is paid commensurate with the food he produces a banker is commensurate with the service he provides to the society to manage somebody's money etc but there is a class of people the private equity firm that has no right to exist because they produce absolutamente nada nothing they look at you they look at a company and they say aha uh -huh, there's a company how can i take that company and make some money off of it let me tell you what they did with toys r us toys r us a profitable company with a lot of assets buildings and all of that stores that they own they own these things the company a successful company and what do they do they say, wait a minute, we can take that company and monetize that company. Wait a minute, guys. This is a private equity firm. It, is, it has done nothing to sell toys. It has done nothing to build toys. It has done nothing to service anything in the toy industry. So they come in and they say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy up the stocks of that company, right? I'm a private equity firm. And I am going to then take that company and borrow the money from the banks on that stock. And then, by the way, I'm doing this as Toys R Us, right? So that debt belongs to Toys R Us, right? So what is debt? I have, I got an influx of monies. That's debt, right? On, and it's backed by what? Assets. But again, the assets are there. Right. And those of us who did that transaction take a hefty fee. We are managing this buyout. Remember, they produce no toys. They've sold no toys. They've done nothing. They just went into that company. They have capital. They use their capital to start the process of owning the company, leveraging the company. Leveraging means turning that company's assets into debt. It is like if you own your house outright, you can leverage your house by saying, I will take out a loan on my house. I still live in the house. I have a loan. I pay back some money on a monthly basis, but I have a whole bunch of cash. I can go blow on vacations and cars and all of that as I just pay back that loan. They leverage that company. They leverage the employees of that company. They extract fees. Again, what are these fees? Millions of dollars just to do this transaction that should not have occurred in the first place. Millions of dollars they charge the company to teach it how to borrow money on the assets that that company has already accumulated. But it goes a bit further than that. They then sell the buildings and assets that the company owns to you know, maybe a REIT, a uh, a, a reinvestment, uh, a, a real estate investment trust, or something like that. They may sell the buildings to these other financial entities, and then Toys R Us is then forced to pay rent for the building it once owned. So whoever bought 
all those buildings from Toys R Us and gave them cash. Now they're getting their cash back in the form of rent. It's the it's capitalism at its max. That is legal, and that is what caused the demise of Toys R Us. And whenever you hear about a company that seemingly had been doing very well for decades and decades and decades, and suddenly they're going bankrupt, and it's not like the people stop buying a whole lot of toys. If you if you go ahead and look at these companies' books, they're within 10% up and down, 10% up and down. They don't deserve to be out of business. All those employees do not deserve to be gone. But that's what it does to you. But now you don't have the news media telling you this in detail. They're telling you, oh, their profits have gone down because their expenses have gone out of control. Their expenses went out of control because they're now paying rent for the buildings they once owned. They're paying management fees for the loans that they that this new uh, owner of these stock took out on, 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 the, on the business. And then somehow they want to cut employee wages, etc. It's a transfer of wealth from the worker, the working class, to the Trump class. And everybody talks about, oh, Trump is a businessman, a great businessman. He's a great businessman. Are you kidding me? These are the concept. These are the things that they do to the average working American citizen. And you are always just a cog, a pawn in the wheel. So those who are supporting, we need to run our country like a business. Are you kidding me? If we ever did that, understand that you're but a commodity. Understand what these corporations do. It's not that I have, oh, Egberto is anti-corporations and anti business I love business. I have businesses. But what we're talking about is thievery, what we call, we call legal fraud, because we use the mechanism of capitalism, which by design, they're following the rules of capitalism, because everything is about capital. That's why whenever we, whenever we tax, uh, apply a tax, whenever we, we apply a service or whatever, the first thing you will hear people ask is, how will that affect business? The first thing that should be asked is, how does that affect the well-being of the American population? How does that affect someone having a more prosperous life? How does that make your life more enjoyable? Business is supposed to work at the behest of humanity, not the other way around. But capitalism is by force, by, by design, something that was made to do what again? To service capital and those who own capital. So it isn't, it isn't the popular thing to go against capitalism because the first thing people say is, oh, you damn communist, which I'm definitely not. I'm a free enterpriser. I believe in free enterprise. I believe in everybody being able to have access to success. I believe in everybody being able to own their own businesses. I believe everybody should be able to be profitable and make a profit on what they do. What I don't believe in is a system that turns you into capital, fracture you into bits and pieces, and selling you like the slave we have been made to be. And if you doubt it, whenever you hear about income inequality and wealth disparity, it didn't happen by accident. It is a concrete design of our economic system. We've tried to mitigate it many times by creating progressive tax rates that as, cap as you get more money, you're taxed more by ensuring that the, that the profits from companies in the past couldn't be used to do things like stock buybacks that affect employees. We used to do those things to take the evil out of capitalism or to take some of the evil out of capitalism. We tried it. And it worked for some time between uh, uh, our, uh, not RFK, but uh, uh, not LBJ, but between uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, the New Deal, uh, the Great Society, and all these programs that were created to take the to take the malice out of what capitalism does, because you know it has no heart by design, right? It's all about if you take a look at the definition, 
the efficient allocation of resources, which is false, first of all, because look at the healthcare system. The efficient allocation of resources doesn't mean having many entities in there at all. In fact, that makes it inefficient. But that's what it says. And, and the God of capitalism said, forget about any social programs. Forget about the environment. Your sole goal as executives in a capitalist company is the maximization of profits for the shareholder. No other job do you have. And that eventually results in monopoly. And why does that eventually result in monopoly? Because if you are maximizing the profits of your entities, of your shareholders, etc., eventually you try to eat up everything that is competing to, to minimize or to limit the profits of your shareholders. Continue with the article, the kind of looting by private equity has since the, since the 1980s happened thousands of times in all sectors of our economy, leading to the needless loss of millions of jobs. Researchers writing for the Becker Friedman Institute at the University of Chicago have found that on average, employment shrinks by 13% when a private, a private equity firm buys a public company, as Forbes notes. All too often, when private equity professionals tout their cost-cutting strategies, they do not mention that cost-cutting means firing people and taking away their livelihoods. Yes, they want to make more, which is what they do. That's the design of that. Uh, private equity corporations, that is, their, that is their mission. Their mission isn't to do good for society. Their mission isn't to do good for humanity. Their mission is the people who own this equity firm will go out there and hunt. They hunt companies. They can buy on the cheap, leverage it, sell it off, and dump employees as best they can to take that money. That's the design. That is not saying that's not, that, that, that is a byproduct. That is the design of a private equity company. They're doing it in healthcare right now. Look around your neighborhood, whether you're in Ohio, whether you are in North Carolina, whether you are in Georgia, Texas, whatever. You see all these pop-up uh, emergency rooms starting up. You see all these little clinics coming up. And have you been to one of them? and see what they charge and why they charge and how they charge. These are private equity firms buying up all of these things, putting doctors to work for them, etc. These doctors are now making menial salaries, one employee, and then they are cleaning up on the insurance companies, which ultimately you pay for as well. This privatization and, 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 and framing it as something good for you is the biggest lie. And, and by not... Let by you not understanding, I, when I say you, I'm talking about those who are learning this today, not understand, will have you vote against your own interests. You know why Donald Trump gets a pass, folks? You know why the media, in as much as people like to say, ah, look how the mainstream media is treating Donald Trump, he doesn't get the treatment that he deserves for the, for the harm that they've done. You notice when Donald Trump told Hillary Clinton, I don't pay taxes because I am smart? Remember that? He's right. Because again, taxes are for us. These guys are thieves. That's what he's telling you. What he's also telling you is I don't, you know, I don't have to pay back loans to bank. I go ahead and tell a bank, give me a loan. Here's the asset that I may control a piece of. I write it up this way. I give it a value, whatever value I want to give it. And you give me something on it. It's a it's the system, it's capitalism, it's how it works. And if you play the game, if you went to school, if you went to, if you went to uh, let's say, the, the business school, Harvard Business School, or, or, or the business, you these are things that you learn, and you tend to believe that there's something honest about it. You tend to believe that there may be something rewarding about it, but it is nothing more than leave glass theft and antiseptic slavery. Free enterprise is what should reign. And until we understand these features, we will never get ahead. Stock buybacks and greed. Workers are also learning that when hedge funds buy up company stock and demand stock buybacks, there's job, there's job trouble ahead. 
Just ask the 32,000 workers and Bed Bath & Beyond. Women listening to my show right now, you guys remember Bed Bath & Beyond, right? Well, a lot of people shop there. My wife used to love her bed, bath, and beyond and get all those sweet things and towels and all of that. That company has been always doing fine, but it got those, those sharks saw it and said, ah, we can make some money there. All right. A stock buyback, which was essentially illegal until 1982, is a form of stock manipulation. A company uses its funds or borrows money to go into the market place and buy up its own shares of stock by doing so the number of shares in circulation goes down while the earnings per share go up the stock price rises even though no new value was added to the company it's just a matter of manipulating it is not these guys providing values they are the ones who people revere hey look at that rich venture capitalist hey look at that rich uh stock fund holder hey look at that rich uh, uh private equity firm manager they revere these people and these people are no better than lucifer because their job is to take away money from those who earned it those who work for it and pocket it by using financial instruments to do so. There is no good value that comes out of this. But this is capitalism. This is Trump. This is what they're talking about. When we talk, when you hear Kamala talk about an opportunity economy, it is uh, she won't say this. She would come out and say, I am a capitalist, but I want to make sure it's an opportunity economy. They are mutually exclusive. They are mutually exclusive. They cannot coexist. They cannot coexist. Once you put the brakes on capitalism, what you get is free enterprise in the good direction or fascism in the bad direction. And what she's doing is cloaking capitalism with free enterprise and saying, let's create a, an opportunity economy. And that is what all of us should want. All of us who work for a corporations, we are at the behest at whatever private equity firm wants to come in and say, wait a minute, I can make a dollar by leveraging that company. I can make a dollar by selling that company. I can make a dollar by laying off those workers because even as they're needed, even as they're the ones producing, I can make a dollar. Folks, is you know, um, I got, I had, I'm coming to the callers in a minute. I, every first Saturday of the month, I have a program for my listeners, for the PDR Posse, the Politics Done Right Posse, called Ask Egberto Anything. It's a Zoom call, and folks who sign up for it, uh, we talk, you know, on Zoom, video if you want to, if you don't want to turn your camera off, and we have questions. And a few conservatives came on. And one specifically, I think he's in the chat right now, kind of gave me a hard time because he he got offended when I talk uh, when I said when I confronted them with uh, willful ignorance and and certain phrases that I use and I I try to say uh, and and one of my progressive listeners says Egberto, while you're right, I understand what you're saying, but maybe you need to uh, find a, a better way to say it when I'm speaking specifically to my right-wing brothers and sisters. Because you want to be heard. You want to be listened to. You want them to listen to you. And one of them said, yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're hitting this up, I'm not really listening. You know, we're fighting, right? And I agree with them. I, it, yes, on, on the program, I did tell them, you know what? I, I try to do that. Hell, I wrote the book, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relative, Friends, and Neighbors. But I said, you know what? I'm only human. We are, we are all just humans. And sometimes... You get so frustrated with people not with people allowing themselves to be used, people allowing themselves to be gullible, that sometimes you just go bat you know what crazy in your rhetoric. So I'm gonna to try to modify some of that rhetoric. So I see it. by the way, one of the people that were there, <laughs> Brother Eric, he's one of the ones that had something to say that he's in the chat right now as well. You didn't know you're gonna be a part of the show today, Eric, did you? And also Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain, who was at our Ask Egberto Anything, is also in the chat. Welcome to the chat, my dear brothers and sisters. Um, 
but they want us to remain ignorant on these issues. They do. And this goes to everybody so I can say it. It's not just to my right wingers. So let's not be willfully ignorant. I have been ignorant of a lot of things myself. When I was a sexist, I was ignorant. When I was a homophobe, I was ignorant. When, what, when I learned how ignorant I was, I made the change and I atoned. And in the process, I was no longer ignorant. As well, I could have stayed even knowing the truth. I could have stayed being a sexist, even knowing the truth. I could have stayed being a homophobe. But that would then make me willfully ignorant. And there's something dangerous. There's something pathetic about being willfully ignorant for whatever reason it is that you choose willful ignorance. There are certain things that are black and white. There are certain things that are debatable. I can debate whether we want small government or big government or right-sized government. We can have a, a valid discussion. That's a gray area. If you want less services for the government, you're a little government person, you live by the constraints that you've given. If I want larger government and that's what we vote for, we vote, we, we built a constraint. That isn't wrong or right. That is preference. But there are certain things that are black and white that are not debatable, that are provable. And that is where we need to sit, my brothers and sisters. Okay. I'm going to start taking my calls. I, I, I wanted to get that one, that this narrative in badly. Let's go ahead and go to Brother Donald. Come on in, Donald. How are you doing, sir? Hey, good morning, Alberto. How are you today? I am doing fine, my brother. Talk to me. So uh, that was a good piece. I got interrupted with Artie Arnest. And normally it's like nails on a chalkboard to me to listen to her. But, mm -hmm. you know, that was great about fracking and how big their private ranches are in other states and how they've got airplane hangers that are full of classic cars, that is not the Christianity that I'm part of. Mm -hmm. And they're not, those people are not prosperity Christians. They are control freaks, and they use Christianity as uh, their control methods. Okay, yeah. where they got their money from, I know. And uh, on your part, we can change those laws if we elect the right people to go to Washington and change the tax codes. Yes. Because the way we run businesses now are staying in debt. Funnel all your company, your personal vehicles, funnel all this, rent everything, show it all as a loss, and never show a profit so you don't have to pay taxes. Man, you, you brother, you've got it, brother. brother. You learned private, it, yes. Private equity, those private equity groups that I was telling you about, y'all are starting to hit the nails on the head. You're figuring it out because these people are wolves in sheep's clothing. And I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. There's a lot of them out there. So, But yes. that's all i got to say about that. But when you hit the wilts, you need to look at where their money came from and how they run their businesses and when they sold their businesses. And then they restarted them again, and, and you'll figure all this out. But that's all I got to say about it. But that's what we Thank need to do. Thank you, Donald. You're a good man. I appreciate you. Uh, let, let's go. Uh, folks, don't. Thank you, Donald. The number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. 713-526-5738. 713-526-5738. Let's go to Brother Johnny. Come on in, Johnny. And by the way, welcome Billy Allison Irwin to the chat. Eric Hayes from Barcelona. I mean, Eric Hayes from uh, Kingwood at Tascacida. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. And Billy Allison uh, Irwin from uh, Houston. All right, come on in, Johnny. Yeah, now I've got to go and listen to, uh, on the archive, to this morning's edition of Arnie Arneson's The Attitude, because I'm dying to find out what it is about what she said today got under uh, <laughs> Ronald, Ronald McDonald's goat. I'm so curious about that now. So, uh, Alberto, that was an excellent uh, opening today. You know, it's okay. It's okay to be angry about capitalism. How do I know? Because Bernie wrote a book titled that last year. 
And what I like about that book is, amongst the many things he talks about, covers a lot of the stuff you cover, is that he also talks about news deserts and how the lack of local media leads people to pay more attention to conspiracy theories and social media. And his, I guess one of his solutions is to wanting to provide federal funding for local media, which I agree with. Mm-hmm. I think you and I have talked about this many times as what we need to do amongst uh, besides breaking uh, breaking apart these uh, gigantic Manhattan located uh, media, these corporate media, they got they've got to be demonopolized. But what I'm concerned about today, on the anniversary of the October 3rd, October 7th incursion into uh, that kibbutz, is the propagandizing now. America is going to be beaten, beaten up with by Netanyahu and all of his criminal aff- affiliates who will be given lots of airtime because our government is so sheepish and our media is so sheepish and so afraid to offend. So we will be propagandized by them, and I I do not appreciate Netanyahu and his people trying to say how much he's uh, honoring the memory of these liberals who were kidnapped and killed in that kibbutz that day, because you and I both know he has a long-established history of hating libs, just like Donald does. Donald hates everybody, and he despises his supporters. And so when Donald goes to that national cemetery and violates the law and, and has his people intimidate the staff there so he can have a photo op, he doesn't care about those dozen or so people. You, know, you and I both know what he's doing. And I see what Netanyahu's going to do with his liberals and that kibbutz is the same exact thing. I don't, I don't want to give him a time of day of anything. And by the way, you're correct. Uh, you should be able to vent your spleen every once in a while. Why should we always have to bite our tongue? Why should we be afraid to offend the people on the other side of the aisle? They need to grow up a little bit, I think. They don't, they don't have a monopoly on being angry and upset because they can't handle the truth when we speak the truth to them? I think you do an excellent job of reaching out. You have nothing, zero, to apologize for. They need to grow up. Thank you, Johnny. Have a good one, my brother. Appreciate you. All right, let's go ahead and go to Jacob. Come on in, Jacob. Yo, hey, Humberto, look again, man. What you said, everything you said was the truth. What I don't understand you coming from another place. What 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 make what makes you this this country was found on an evil empire. Everything you said happens on the back happened on the back of my of my people for hundreds and hundreds of years. Why would you want to come to an evil place like this? And like with me, I well you could go anyway. No, 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 no. I'm not going nowhere until I see the creator do exactly what's promised. In that book everybody Christian it's not a Christian book. It's a history book about a certain people, and my people feel every prophecy from the beginning to the end, and there's no denying about it. It describes us to a T. It's our colors, everything, hair texture, everything about us. Now, Jacob, why would you want to come? Why would you want to come to a place? Like let me answer. This? Let me answer your question. I, I, I wanted, I, you know, I didn't want to cut you off, but you, you asked the question. And I said I want to answer that because a lot of people ask that, right? Um, you and have to realize. To with it. So one, one last thing to go with it. Yes, was sir. It, was it because it, was it because you seen my people that looked like you with what they was a, accomplishing here? Far as after all the oppression and everything, they still was doing it. Or was it white people that you seen? So called white people. Go ahead. Okay, let, let me let me explain something to you. Right, America is the Western Hemisphere. Uh, when you and I spoke about reparations and you talk and, and I told you one of the issues that I have with uh, the, that organization that's trying to, uh, uh, to, to get reparations, and I told you that they, they treated me, a black person from a Latino country, as an outcast. And, ah, you're not getting anything. Like, I wasn't asking for anything. You have to understand this. America is the entire Western Hemisphere, whether it be Canada Mexico, a great I mean, uh, uh, the Caribbean, South America, Central America. America controls it all. Okay? And uh, the truth of the matter is uh, upward mobility, if you're because of the way the class system works all over this hemisphere, 
is greater in America. I could come here and do things that it would be a bit more difficult for me to accomplish in Panama just because of the social structure and how it works out there. And that's why you see people come. Yes, it is the land of opportunity. And I tell you what, America was not founded on great principles, but it became, it, it, cre it had good enough principles to evolve. And that evolving created the, the MLKs, the RFK. I mean, it created a lot of people who wanted to do good because it was a, it was a country where people from everywhere came. The people that we most have to revere, uh, or not revere, but yeah, I'll say revere, are the Native Americans who, in effect, seeded this land in the long run. In other words, uh, they are not they're not throwing up arms to take back what's theirs. They're saying, we're at status right now. Let's go ahead and make the best of it. And what I am doing, what you are doing, I hope, and what everybody everybody is doing, or doing, everybody's doing, is trying to make it a better country, not for a few, but for all. And that is what my goal is. My goal is, I am here. I... I I did very well in America. Now that I'm doing this, I'm not so much. But uh, I did very well in America, and it and and it was, it, it it is that thing that says, but you damn well should not have had to work as hard as I as I did, to do or to do or get what I got. Yeah. All right. Now well, let, me, let me ask you this. Go ahead. Let me yes, ask sir. You this real quick. Now. So if you being able to do what you had to being able to do was because of the laws that my people got set up. It was for us to be included that y'all could come here. Would you have a, you would would you think you would have the audacity to come here in eighteen hundred seventeen? No, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely not. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I, you heard not. wait, Jacob, hold on a second. You heard my show when I spoke about foreign black folks and foreign Latino folks and foreign Asian folks come into this country and somehow looking at the, the black people who were descendants of slaves in America and disparage them. You heard me come here and say, uh, that is, I mean, they, they owe the black folk in America who fought the civil rights, who fought for equality. We, those of us who came after that revolution, owes it to all of you to have laid the groundwork, to lay the pathway that allowed us to come here. Oh, Who the okay. hell are... Wait, let me oh, finish. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Hold up. Hold on. Hold on. Who the hell are we to somehow disparage those who paid the price? You got it? That's right. That's all. No, all right. I let you, no, no, I got to let you go. Jacob, we talk tomorrow. Jacob, we talk, to, Jacob, we talk tomorrow, right, brother. You, we talk tomorrow. Thank you, brother. Let's go to Anne. Hi. I just want to agree with Johnny that um, yeah, you really probably haven't ratcheted up high enough to these creeps. I mean, really, they only talk nastily all the time to everybody, and that's the only language they understand. And if you bring it down a notch or two, they're going to think you're a wimp. And I want to tell you this. Your buddies that advised you to do so, Unfortunately, they are knuckleheads. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. You have a wonderful rest of your day. All right, let's go to uh, Brother David. Okay, we're going to get to David in a little bit. Come on in, Brother David. Is that any better? Oh, that yeah, is you're great. on, David. You're on. You know, I, um, I, I originally started the call because uh, there was some talk about the economy and whatnot, and you were, you were talking about the um, falseness of the GOP. They aren't smart enough to budget for saving their own lives. They cannot admit that global warming is real because they're taking money from the polluters to say it's not real. And the bribes supersede common sense. And so they cannot have a budget for America, for FEMA, because FEMA knows that these uh, hurricanes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger uh, because the polluters have so poisoned the oceans that they're like an industrial ditch. And that hot, tepid water 
is creating bigger storms. And so they can't clean it up. They can't admit to, to, uh, to the problem because as soon as they admit, then there's a percentage that they need to pay and there's not enough money on the planet to, to you know, for cleaning up the oceans or for dealing with the ozone layer. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. And the biggest part of uh, trying is making sure that pollution stops. And uh, so, yeah, these uh, Republicans uh, or the, uh, the corrupt corporations that have poisoned the planet are, are causing the health problems. They're causing, the, as far as I'm concerned, they created COVID. Because if it was really a bat, yeah, if it was really a bat that caused COVID to emerge, it was a bat in the polluted city of Wuhan. And it was one of the most polluted cities in the world. David, and, uh, and, I, I, yeah. I got you. I got you. I, I got you. The, the gist, but I, I, I'm cl close on time now, and I have three, four more that I got to get to. But thank you very much. Let's talk tomorrow. All right, Harry, come on in. Harry, I'm going to have to reduce everybody to 60 seconds. My fault, but hey, what can I say? Come on in, brother. Uh, that's okay. I just have to say this fast. When you were talking about the economy, I, I was talking with my friend in Florida, the Trump guy. He, he was telling me, oh, it's Bidenomics. Why my hours got cut? And I told him, no, it's not Bidenomics. That's between you and UPS why your uh, hours got cut. Biden had nothing to do with that. And I did listen to Arnie Arneson uh, this morning, like I do every morning. Uh, and Howard's right. You know, Arnie's very, uh, uh, I liked her guest that she had. Uh, he uh, talked about, um, uh, let's see, it, um, in the, well, I'm trying to get, remember all this, but uh, in the second half hour with Bill Curry and uh, Stephen Prepare, they were talking about, you want to go back to the Trump policies, which they, you know, pointed all that out. And then they talked about uh, the Bible, about a thousand, of uh, the earth a thousand years old, and then Artie would say, no, science, y you should have freedom of choice in the public schools with the science on how to determine how old the earth is, not just people's, not just the Christian rights Bible and, 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 and their faith and, and, and that that should be mandatory and taught in the schools. Those guys, so, yeah, uh, Howard's right. Jo you know, listen to Artie Arson's show. You should listen to it as much well, as you can. I, I got to go listen to it, too. I didn't get a chance to listen to it, but Harry, I got to right. go. But thank very you very right. much for calling, brother. Let's go to Brian. Come on in, Brian. One minute. Yeah, you, uh, last conversation we had, you said that this nation was founded by criminals. And I'd like to know where you, you got this information because slavery was abolished in Pennsylvania in 1770 or, or thereabouts. But what year was it uh, abolished in Panama? 1851. Look. Oh, you didn't know a, that, did you? You didn't know that, yes. did you? No, no, no. Look, uh, Brian, let me just say this. Okay, first of all, I didn't say the country was founded by criminals. I didn't say that. You couldn't find anywhere in the transcript where I said that. I said, if you take a look at the norms by which our founding fathers formed this country, right? It's, a, it's how every country that, that wasn't formed peacefully was formed. We went up against the British. We fought them. We shed blood to create this country. We also created genocide to, fund, to, to take over much of this country, and we instituted slavery. And guess what? It is all in the Constitution. You don't have, you don't have to take my word for it. You just have to read the Constitution and its amendments. It's that simple. During the time of the writing, during the time of the writing of the Constitution, it doesn't matter. It's many, there. How many people voted? How many people were allowed to vote? Only, so we only one, white men. Oh, oh, sir, sir, own oh, sir, one at a time. Only white men who own property could vote. That was how our country was founded. Okay, women didn't matter. People of color didn't matter. That was in our constitution, okay? So you can talk and, and get irate about it. That's just a statement of fact. Have a great day, Brian. I got to go to Patrick and we'll talk tomorrow. Let's go, Patrick. Come on in. Hi, Brian. The, uh, uh, this country was founded by draft dodgers and people that were trying to flee constriction, cons constriction um, and people that were uh, uh, running from... Uh, prescribed uh, freedom or religion. They were looking for freedom from religion and freedom of religion. That's why they moved here. That's not why I called, though. Arnie Arneson did have a, a good show this morning. 
there was a one-liner by one of her guests that was just outstanding, and I wanted to highlight it. Uh, the housing, the answer, Donald Trump's answer to the housing crisis is ethnic cleansing. That's all. I've <laughs> oh my God, I laugh, but that is terrible. It's a good line, Patrick. Anything else, Patrick? Before I gotta go. No, sir. Have a great day. You have a wonderful day, uh, Patrick. Folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. We try to make it substantive as possible and something that you can take away and chew. But today's show specifically about private equity firms and how it interacts with our economic system is extremely important. And if you didn't, if you came in middle of the show or whatever, do as uh, uh, Howard always say, go to our archive and check it out because I, it, it, we cover a very important subject. And with that, I'm going to pass it to our brothers in the studio. Well, gee, I didn't know that I was going to wake up this morning and be a walking, talking promo for Arnie Arneson. But she has <laughs> such a fascinating show on today that I think everyone should listen to this. Seriously. Uh, go to our archive page, pull up Arnie's show. I think you probably go to her home page too and pull up the show. And as for Donald, yeah, sometimes it is like uh, nails on a chalkboard to listen to her, but she is very informative and very good at what she does. So that's probably one of the reasons why I listen in in the morning. I mean, I've got a choice of a whole bunch of radio stations and I choose this one, well, largely because I work here, but largely because you learn something. And the private equity firms, I learned a lot about that this morning, too. So, Egberto, you have informed the public, and I have informed the public to listen to Arnie Arneson on our archive page. And that is just about all I got. Jack, what you got, man? Jack says nada, so take it home. It's amazing for Jack not to have something. Jack, I think it's two days in a row that you've said that. I don't know. I'm getting a bit concerned, my brother. But anyhow, I'm playing with you. You know. All I right, know. I got something. All right. Dude. All right, go for it. Let Donald, me hear it. Donald's a guy that see, that sees and recognizes things that the left sees and recognizes. Yeah, you all know. right. All right. All right. Anyway, folks, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jack, for that. Thank you, Howard Reynolds. Anyway, folks, here's the deal. Uh, we had a lot more in the program, but I knew I wasn't going to cover it all. So it's at politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. Uh, look, guys, love you all. Love the calls. I hope you got something out of the show. You can always email me at kpft at politics and right if you, if you have comments or anything you want to talk about. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! Support for this show, Politics and Right, comes from politicsandright.com, publishers of How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, and other books written by Egberto Willis. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are